Hey, my name is Tom and welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. A friend of mine has just moved into this terrace property in Durham. It's a two up, two down house and it has a gas boiler. The gas boiler is pretty new, so it isn't a priority to install a heat pump immediately. Although I reckon there is probably some space here for one, but it would be great to get this gas boiler working as a as efficiently as possible, at least until a heat pump could be installed. So I've watched a load of Heat Geek videos. I've read a bunch of documents online, including from the Heating Hub, and I'm going to make some changes to improve the efficiency of this boiler. I'm going to make some changes to reduce the boiler cycling and ultimately reduce the cost to heat the house. Okay, so there are three steps that will have an impact and I'm going to do all of them. The first two are pretty simple. The third means going into the depths of the installation manual. Okay, so step one, I'm gonna reduce the flow temperature of the hot water. The house has a shower, a bathroom sink and a kitchen sink, and the hot water is supplied to all of these from the combi boiler. The hot water was set to generate at 55 degrees. And I guess if you touch 55 degrees water, you'd quickly pull your hand away. So it doesn't necessarily need to heat to that high. It pre pretty much never needs to be that high. So I'm gonna reduce the temperature, the flow temperature of the water, just a little bit down to 45 degrees. The house won't use that much water, hot, not much hot water, so this isn't gonna make a huge difference. But Heat Geek reckons it could reduce hot water bills by up to 8%. Okay, so go on mode. So it's on heating and hot water here. So the hot water is set to run at 55 degrees. We're gonna turn that down to run at 45 degrees. Interestingly, I didn't know this was gonna happen, but it's just come up with the eco sign there. So that's now set at 45 degrees. Step two is something similar, but this is for radiator temperatures. So this is not turning the thermostat down. The boiler will still work to get a house to a set temperature and you'll still be as comfortable as you were before, but it just means that the boiler will be working less hard. It, will, it means it will stop turning off and on again when the heating is on, stop cycling off and on again. And it means it'll actually work in what we call the condensing mode. And this means that we'll increase efficiency and we'll decrease gas use by up to 10%. So I'm gonna set the flow temperature to 50 degrees C, which is likely to be plenty this time of year during autumn and spring months. So October, November, um, and then the end of February, March, April, that kind of time. But it might not be enough for December and January in Durham. It may well be, but it might not be. So if my pal is cold in the deepest, darkest winter, I'm gonna show them how to knock up the temperature a little bit, but with some strict warnings not to go too high. So that one's 45 degrees. This one, so the heating flow temperature was 75 degrees. I'm gonna turn that right down to 50 degrees, which I think should be plenty for most of the year. Brill. And then finally, step three. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail here. So this boiler is a Glowworm EasyCom 24, which means it could provide up to 24 kilowatts of heat at full pelt. The factory settings are for 18 kilowatts of heat. And I suspect that's actually, that's actually way too high. So my house that I live in is a three, three bedroom terrace house. It's about 50% bigger um, than this house and has a heat loss of around five kilowatts. So I suspect this house could cope with much less than 18 kilowatts. But let's do the calc. I'm gonna look at uh, the Heat Punk website to do a quick heat loss calc. So the heat pump website is heatpunk.co.uk. Heat okay. I got an account a while back, so I had a play. It's kind of used normally to size heat pumps. I've used it basically to give me a heat pump specification that will give me a heat loss for the building. So I've drawn, roughly drawn the lounge and dining room um, and the kitchen, put some windows in, put a door in. Um, put some radiators in, you know, all these kind of things for the first floor and second floor. So you see that kind of thing. Um, and then it jumps out a heat pump selection. So you've got a six kilowatt Samsung split unit or a seven kilowatt Aerotherm Plus, which is the unit above the one I've got. And the website Heat Punk thinks that uh, a six kilowatt heat pump would be sufficient for this building. 
which suggests the heat loss is similar to my house. So 18 or 24 kilowatts of heat will be much too high for this house. So I'm going to reduce the output of this boiler. I'm going to bring rate the output of this boiler. And this will mean the boiler doesn't cycle as much. So it doesn't accelerate really hard to speed up and then slow down to zero. It just pootles along at a lower pace. But this will still be in a, a sufficient pace to get us to where we want to be. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to reduce the rating to 10 kilowatts. It could go as down as low as eight kilowatts, but I'm going to be a little bit cautious. So to do this, we're going to need to go into the depths of the installer's controls on the boiler and go into the installation settings and turn the rating of the boiler down from 18 kilowatts. Okay, so I've gone deep into the installation instructions. I can change the maximum heating output to a lower kilowatt. If we look back to the technical data at the start, so actually maximum heat put outputs at this one um, is set in the factory to 20 kilowatts, so we could get that a little bit lower, I think. So to go into installer mode, we hold this down for seven seconds. We then, we then change the password to get to 96, which is the installer password, and then we press mode to validate that. So this is the first setting we can change and we want to change the D naughty naught so Z00 setting, which is the maximum heat output. The setting this is one we want to do, so mode, and this is set to 20 kilowatts, the rating of the boiler. So I'm going to turn this down to 10, which should mean the boiler doesn't cycle on and off as much. Okay, I'm happy I've now re-rated the boiler to 10 kilowatts. I'm going to hold this down to get us to accept the changes and get out of the install settings. Brill. So we're on a, we've reduced the flow temperature of the hot water and we've reduced the flow temperature of the radiators and we've rated the boiler to a little bit less than what it was. Heat Geek reckons this could reduce gas use by 6%. So for heating, I think we could have reduced gas use overall by around 15% as, with the flow temperature, as well as that 8% on the hot water use. With a 15%, maybe overall efficiency gain, that really is a step change in emissions, and that would be brill to see. We aren't going to have any data to compare this, the impact of this against, um, but hopefully it will be a meaningful step for my friend, and it means that their heat, heating bills won't be as high as they could have been. So here's my challenge. Could you go down a similar route? What is your hot water temperature? What is the flow temperature in the radiators? And what is the rating of your boiler? Is it right for your home? It'll be brilliant to see what impact on heating bills you could have in the next few months. I've looked at similar things for our heat pump setup and I'll do a video about that at some point. Um, if you're interested in watching how I've improved the efficiency of my heat pump, do hit subscribe. And if you want to see one of my videos uh, that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, have a look over here. <laughs>